In this video, we will turn our attention to creating spatiotemporal narratives using Neatline in Omeka. We will examine Neatline's structure and interface before beginning to work in Neatline in the following video. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. Neatline is a tool, or plugin, within Omeka for creating interactive exhibitions by visualizing items and additional content in space and time. A plugin is a smaller application built to run within a larger platform, in this case Omeka, that extends that larger platform's functionality. Neatline makes it possible for Omeka users to arrange and present items in larger thematic narratives. We can use text, visual and oral media to present a narrative that shows temporal and spatial relationships between items and ideas. Neatline has several additional structural elements that extend Omeka's overall data structure. While Omeka has items, collections, and exhibits, Neatline has its own exhibits. These are visual narratives created using Neatline records and Omeka items. Neatline records are individual entries within a Neatline exhibit. These entries contain the visual and oral media, text, and can have Omeka items embedded within them. Each Neatline record can then be linked to one or more points or polygons on a map or image, a point or time span on the timeline, and they can be linked to an outline or long-form text. Let's take a look at a few examples. Neatline's interface is divided into three main areas. The top left area is commonly where we find a map or image layer or layers, as well as points, lines, and polygons that annotate that map or image. Along the bottom, we find a timeline that includes points or spans of time, and these points or spans of time can be connected to these points or polygons on the map, or they may show separate information. Along the right-hand side, we may have either a list, as we have here, of Neatline records, or we may find a long-form text that includes hyperlinks to individual records. Each of these points and, sp and spans on the timeline and the points or polygons on the map are linked to a Neatline record. An Omeka item may then be embedded within that Neatline record. Let's take a look. This student has organized her Neatline project using the outline on the right-hand side. She begins with an introduction, followed by major topics in her Neatline exhibit. Each of these topics links to a Neatline record or an Omeka item embedded within that Neatline record. At the top, we have several images of the Omeka item that is embedded within this Neatline record. Then we have some narrative about this Omeka item and its larger context within the Neatline exhibit. And then finally at the bottom we have all of the metadata embedded from within that Omeka item. We can also interact with our Neatline exhibit by clicking on points on the map or by clicking on points or time spans on the timeline. And notice that when I clicked there, my map jumped to a new location. This is an important feature of Neatline. We can control not only what our users see, uh, but also how they see it. So we can change each individual Neatline record's point of view on the map or the image. If I zoom in, for example, notice that what I see on the map changes. If I click on a Neatline record in my outline, I also find that the map can move. Let's look at another example. What do we find that is different about this example? For one thing, rather than having a base map, which was the Google satellite image, we have an image layer. This is a historic view of Rome. This has not been provided as a layer on top of Google Street Maps or the Google Satellite image. Rather, it's simply an image file that has been added as a base layer. 
Why have we chosen to do this? In this case, the map that the student chose to work with is a view, a perspectival view, that cannot be georectified because it does not uh, correspond to the angle at which satellite imagery is taken from above. Any attempt to georectify this image would result in a highly distorted image that would uh, include the loss of a lot of important information that we can find when we zoom in to this high-resolution image. In addition, the student has used uh, color coding to mark particular uh, categories within her Neatline exhibit. And she has chosen a specific way to uh, note her monuments using triangles in her exhibit. A large triangle in this case may represent a specific location in her narrative. And then within that, the smaller triangles mark specific monuments within that location. Notice as well that she has used HTML formatting to create headings in her outline. So she has divided up her headings by major locations and then underneath by specific monuments. We will show you how to do this kind of HTML formatting in the following videos. Here is a final example that we will look at today. This is an exhibit that has an image base layer. It has a timeline, but this time instead of the outline on the right hand side of our screen, we have long form text. This is an option within Neatline, and in addition to having this text, we can also have uh, items or records that are linked to from this text so that I can make this text clickable to have a neat line record appear on the left hand side. Notice as well that we appear right now to only have one polygon appearing on the image. However, there's far more content hidden within this exhibit if we scroll along the timeline. Notice I have just paused around 200 BCE and my points and polygons have changed on the image. The red polygon disappeared and now we have a number of blue polygons each highlighting particular locations on the image.